Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with Jeremy. Today, you know what we're gonna do? Breaking news. Breaking news. We are bringing you the very, very first look uh, in the studio of the brand new Eastman Madagascar series E20 guitars in both OM and Dread. And we're gonna tell you all about it right after this. one more time with again a first look and I'm so thankful to the folks at Eastman as well as all these guitar companies and that thankful to you the yeah. people that watch these videos because we are getting so many people watching commenting companies are sending us guitars before anybody else so this right. won't be released for another couple weeks speaking of when we got it right now when you yeah. guys are watching at home it's been released and available but we got this ahead of time to do this review on That's so right. thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe you're gonna love this uh, more content like this coming up so we've known about this for a little while. We have. We got to see it. We actually got to know about it before it even existed. Then we got to see this at the 2022 NAMM show. And then uh, we kind of made a deal with them and said, hey, send us this. So what we're going to do to give is give you guys our first initial uh, review of the uh, new Madagascar. This is the E20 MR-TC. Um, and what the MR stands for is Madagascar Rosewood. And again, we're going to talk about this in depth because you, you'll get to hear them, but I want you to know why it is that uh, this is so different and what is amazing about this. And basically, in case you didn't already know this, Jeremy, this is part of the kind of culmination of Bourgeois and Eastman coming together is what brought this guitar into fruition. Um, what The cool thing about this joint venture was between the two companies, they now had much better buying power in order to do stuff like buy a big supply of Madagascar Rosewood, which is kind of a hard thing to come by. And I know there's going to be people that are going to talk about uh, the, you know, the, the uh, what am I Sustainability. Or sustainability or, or the ethical uh, relationship with Madagascar. Of and, and I and, get that. And, and that's real. Yeah. That is real. We do have at the shop, if you're unfamiliar, we do have what we call a shop sustainable where for every tree that, or every guitar we know that was sustainably harvested and has the, the history uh, and provenance that goes with it, we still plant one tree for every guitar people purchase. If we have guitars that don't live up to that standard that we've set, um, we plant five trees in place of it. And this, for the most part, Eastman guitar, uh, the wood they get has been passed that N NFC certification. This one, we're gonna be planting five trees because there is question about so there's a the question about this. So, I, again, I will do, tell this. I went to the source on this and did ask about this. And for paperwork purposes, this does fall under a uh, ethically and sustainably harvested uh, wood, even though we know by dealing with Tom Bedell and his stuff that that's really hard to, to really yeah, The problem's not so secure. much in the companies that are going and trying to make sure they're getting the wood the proper way. It's more on the ground in Madagascar. Mm -hmm. There are illegitimate people making up paper, so it's hard to really tell for sure. So these these could actually be correctly well. harvested and all that. They probably But are. a lot of times people will go up in the middle of the night, cut down trees and roll them down to the river and say, yeah, this was part of that batch. So Madagascar as a country has a problem with making sure it was done legitimately. Not necessarily the people buying the woods, but just for that sake, we're gonna make sure this one, yep. we're kind of we're gonna offsetting. Lean, and we're gonna lean on the side of caution and kind of plan on this one is gonna fall in our non-sustainable. That being uh, said, they are working on improving the, uh, the logging and uh, harvesting of wood in Madagascar, partly because it is such a beautiful wood. It's incredible. And tone wood. It, it really is. I have personally have my own uh, worries about this stuff because I love the sound. I love the look of Madagascar uh, Rosewood. I think it really is a uh, great thing. So I don't want to get too far in the woods on this, but that said, get the it buying power too yeah, far in the, the woods. woods. That's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, I'm a genius. Uh, of the tongue. <laughs> Camera crew is dying right now. That's great. Um, Madagascar Rosewood, like I said, the purchase of this, it's hard to come by. It is hard to get but between the two companies, Eastman and Bourgeois, both needing them for their guitars, they were able to actually get a huge uh, run. And by huge, that's probably one tree, but it's going to be enough to, to support massive amounts of guitars. Believe it or not, you can get a lot of guitars out of one tree. These are large trees. Yeah, these are very large trees. So um, this guitar is one of those, and I think what makes it special is it is Madagascar Rosewood. It is a thermo-cured Adirondack spruce top as part of the E20 series. Um, but the big difference here is the add-on of the Madagascar Rosewood. So 
this is kind of a cool project, and I'm so far what I've noticed is it's kind of living up to what I expected this guitar to be. Those of you who have played East Indian Rosewood, I'm going to give you a short little story here. Back when I was learning to play, late 80s, early 90s, there were a lot of companies and uh, people out there, mainly Martin Guitars, who were trying to claim that there was really no sonic difference between Brazilian Rosewood and East Indian Rosewood. That may have been true out of some of the old growth trees that they were using in their initial bits, but the fact is, is those of us who have been around with guitars long enough know there is a difference. Now, whether you like it better or not, totally different question. I mean, I've played some amazing East Indian Rosewood guitars. I've played some amazing Brazilian Rose guitars. I've played both that weren't so great. So um, it's not the solve all. But what I found is Madagascar has kind of fa fallen in that sweet spot where it's got the brighter projection punch and just this attack that Brazilian always had um, with some of the more warmth uh, and, and qualities of what Indian Rosewood tends apart. Now again, I don't want anybody at home to go, this is, go this is gonna fix everything. We're talking about subtle differences. We've had people on the staff that have played both of these guitars against the Indian Rosewood vari variants of it. And they were like, I hear it. Do I think it's dramatic? I think that's the case with any of these when we get to high-end instruments. We're talking about little things little. that just, to those who are discerning and have been playing long enough and are you know looking for that level of instrument, they're all the difference. For those who are just kind of new to it, you're going to listen to it and go, yeah, I hear it. Yeah. yeah, and there's variance between each of the guitars, so you'll have two of these guitars next to each other and hear some variance. But there's kind of a, a consistency, I think, in the tonal difference you hear. I mean, changing different strings, different picks, sure, all absolutely. that changes the tone of the guitar a little bit. A little bit. So we're talking about these little bit, bitty things that you can do to get that tone that you're searching for, and you found that the Madagascar kind of uh, bridges between that Brazilian, which you just can't get anymore unless you the price tag way up. Hey, we're talking about Bedell, too much. and then the East Indian, which is much more common. That would be like the standard E20, mm -hmm. and then so the Madagascar is kind of totally falling in in between. And then I think the look, look of, it of it also does the same thing. It looks much more like the Brazilian with a little bit maybe less uh, streakiness than you would have in the. I think Indian. to the untrained eye, almost everybody will notice that this is different than a Indian rosewood look. Um, and Browners. for a lot of people, they will mistake uh, Madagascar Rosewood for Brazilian. It does have, sometimes you can get some of the black inky lines. I uh, <clears throat> looked at one recently that we've got in the shop from Boucher that uh, if I had known better, I would, I would assume that it was Brazilian Rosewood. Um, and, and totally, I find it to be so close that I would definitely recommend it. I mean, you're hearing this... <laughs> When the string, when the pick hits the string, it's doing it in a very blunt, round, fast jump out of the guitar. Um, and it's a very, and this is very interesting too about these particular guitars. Here's something I found that's kind of uh, interesting. The back side of this guitar, and I said this about the Thermo Cured Eastmans when they first came out with the tens and twenties. I didn't hear the major difference on the back side of the guitar near as much as I did when I sat in somebody front of it. Playing when it. somebody else played it for me, I just was like, whoa, what was that? Um, and I find that to be the case with this guitar, too. There's a projection, and I think it's just the way it bounces it's off the projection, of they also have like this really long, sustained tone. Like that, that has that warmth you were talking about, where it's just, it's a warm sustain that just kind of keeps going, but that initial fast attack. Especially for Rosewood, Rosewood has a tendency to, to kind of lean on mushiness. And I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've played uh, mahogany for the past almost 15, 18 years, almost exclusively. I had a couple of Rosewood guitars, I just didn't play them. In miking situations, they did not seem to do very well. I recently got a Madagascar guitar that I love because it mics extremely well. I have a feeling this will do the same sort of deal. It's a tighter, more responsive deal, less mushy. And maybe that's, again, I grew up with Indian Rosewood as the majority of the guitars I played. So maybe that's what I'm hearing and why I tend to like that out of the Brazilian slash Indian Rosewood sound. It's not big, boomy, round, you know, uh, 
you know, kind of over, heavy overtone kind of deal. It's a more tight, uh, compact type of a tone. We're looking at a guitar here that is going to price way lower than anything out there. In fact, I, the price escapes me now, but uh, somebody look this up uh, and yell it at me. I want to say it's like $2,300 uh, uh, is the street price on this guitar, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, just, just that option in here alone it should be dramatically higher than that. So we're waiting on that uh, answer. But as we're waiting on it, uh, that's I think what's gonna make this amazing. We're getting a thermo cured the Adirondack. Right yeah, right there. <laughs> it's gonna be an Adirondack spruce top that is thermo cured, which again, Eastman is actually stepping up the game now. They have their own kiln, are able to do the thermo curing in their own facility with great high quality uh, tops, getting the same batch of Madagascar. Now, admittedly, for the custom built bourgeois, they probably selected some of the yep. more premium pieces, but that you're still be, getting, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're I mean, if you're gonna spend $9,000 on a guitar, that better be premium, yep. friend. I, I, I wouldn't buy it otherwise, so. Um, yeah, uh, this is just a great buy all the way around. Again, neck profile is back to the standard Eastman shape. It is an inch and three quarters, uh, bone nut and saddle, Light hand voice, uh, hard shell case, the whole shebang. So if I understand correctly, they did buy a lot, large supply of this, but the plan is to just build until that supply is gone. Is that correct? Correct. So this... It's limited, but not as limited as what Matt would think. It's not a limited edition. It's just a limited to the supply that they have with no plans as the, as of now to continue. Now, take that into account because I do know, yeah, so so I just got our numbers in. Just just in. A street price on this, $22,14.99. So way under $2,300, uh, quite a bit. And I... There's like nobody even offering a Madagascar set for twenty three hundred dollars. Get a hard shell case in that price right now. But. <laughs> it's true, um, but yes, you are correct. This is a limited supply, and you also have to take into account that I know for a fact there are projects that are coming out that are going to be dwindling down that Madagascar uh, uh, supply, supply that is not going to be for these E twenties. Um, so they won't be there forever. If no, you are interested, in, absolutely in, not. Definitely try to get them early on because we don't know when that supply is going to run out and they're going to stop building these this particular model. The word that was given to me was when production starts to slow down and they're not getting a crazy backload of these, they'll probably discontinue that and move on to the next project in order to start Reallocate filling those. That mm -hmm. supply. Absolutely. Very cool. Like I said, guys, we really want to thank you guys for subscribing to the channel because that's one of the reasons we're getting these instruments before anybody else, um, doing these quick reviews on them. We're going to let John play these both, uh, the standard dreadnought and the om and give you an idea of how they sound and uh leave your comments down below what you guys think of these guitars we'd love to hear about it
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that video. If you like this one, you're really going to love the video we did about the Touch Tone series. It's the combination of Bourgeois and Eastman and what they were able to come out with. It in perfectly. It's a new Bourgeois guitar built uh, for the everyday man. So check out that video on the link above.